So I'm gonna eat a carb before my workout and then a carb after my workout. Then I've been cutting out one carb throughout the day. She said the word carb about 10 times in the first two minutes of the video. So I'm starting to think that she is in fact a... Coach Greg and today we're going over a video by Daisy Keach. She's a 9.9 .9 on the good looking Richter scale so obviously whatever she does is what we should copy because then we'll probably end up looking like her. Is that actually true or is it not true? Well we're gonna find out we're gonna watch her video. The video it's called what I eat in a day for a flat tummy and a big booty. Well I can't wait to see what she says. To get a flat tummy so, you know, small stomach, small waist, baby with abs, and a big booty at the same time. Wouldn't you want to know? I know Allie wants to know. So maybe I'll pick up some tips and I can put her on a new diet. Maybe I'll make cookbook 3.0. How to get a flat tummy, big booty. Maybe you have to eat certain kinds of foods. Maybe eat avocados, you get a big ass, and maybe you eat bananas, you get a big stomach. So avoid the bananas and eat the avocados. I can't wait to find out what food she eats to get the flat stomach and at the same time to get the big glutes and the big hips. You know what I mean? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Daisy. Well, I'm new here and we like the name Daisy. Brings me back to the Dukes of Hazards with the Daisy Dukes. Remember the Dukes of Hazards? No, because I'm the only one that's on freaking YouTube that's 45 years of age. Look it up, people. It was a great show. I've been incorporating cardio into my workouts just a little bit more. That is also another question actually that you guys had. Um, do I lift weights? Yes, I definitely lift heavy weights for sure. And so she's trying to get a bit leaner. So she does her cardio on her arm days because she's really not focused on building a lot of muscle in the arms. It's not a big deal for her. She's prioritizing glutes as many females do. So don't do as much cardio on glute days because it's going to cause overtraining. If you do in fact do a lot of squats and hip thrusts and try to do your cardio at the same time on the same day, that is a lot of demands on the body and the body cannot recover from everything optimally. So I do think it's a good tip. Don't overtrain on the days where you're trying to focus on that particular body part. You're trying to focus on glutes. Don't do a shit ton of cardio after training your glutes. Same for guys. And the same would apply to any body part. And so they asked her, do you train with weights? And she says, yes, heavy weights. So you do know, in fact, that she does take this seriously. So props to her. She's doing cardio, lifting heavy weights, and trying to be the best that she can be. Great message so far. What I eat today is just what works for me. Every single body is different, so what works for me might not work for you. So she prefaces this video by saying, this is what I do to get a flat stomach and round glutes. So basically, don't copy this at home. It's probably not going to work for you. That's how I take it. But she's making it abundantly clear that this is no secret routine. You can't just copy her diet and expect to get flat waist, round glutes. I kind of like intuitive eat mixed with counting macros. So she describes how she eats by giving you an oxymoron. That's where you'd say basically the opposite of each other at the same time. So I intuitively eat and I count macros. It, no, you can't intuitively eat and count macros. If you're counting your macros, it means you're not intuitively eating. I don't do cardio, I just like going for runs. That's an oxymoron. Educational tip of the day. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eat a carb before my workout and then a carb after my workout. Then I've been cutting out one carb throughout the day. Okay, she said the word carb about 10 times in the first two minutes of the video. So I'm starting to think that she is in fact a carbophobe. So she says, I'm trying to lose weight, so I'm going to have a carb before the workout, a carb after the workout, and cut out a carb later in the day. But the question I have is, what is a carb? I'm cutting out a carb. One gram of carbs that has four calories? I'm cutting out four calories. What is a carb? A carb. A serving of carbs? And if so, how much? I'm cutting out a carb. One cup of rice? Cutting out that? That'd be 200 calories. Are you cutting that out? One slice of bread, 75 calories, or maybe it's a larger slice of bread, 120 calories. So you can't just say I'm cutting out a carb. 
Are you not having a banana? An apple? What form of carbs? This would be equivalent to saying it's summertime, I'm cutting out a clothes. I'm cutting out an item of clothes. Well, which one? The jacket, the shoes, the boots, the shorts, the long sleeve shirt, the parka. What are you cutting out? Exactly. What are you cutting out here? So I'm probably going to take out a carb during lunch or dinner. Just kind of depends. I might just have a carb for breakfast and then... And she doesn't use the plural form of carb. She doesn't know you can have carbs. Plural form of carbs. If I cut this out in the afternoon, I'm going to eat this and I'll have a carb for lunch. I'm having a, a carb for lunch. Carbs, like more than one, like 20 grams of carbs, 30 grams of carbs, 50 grams, 10 grams of protein. Like you don't have a protein, you have protein. It's just the grammar's all over the place. And I know I'm not the one to correct people on glamour. Mine's worse than anyone, but I just noticed that it's just sticking out like a Thor thumb. Am I Chris Bumstead and thick it out like a Thor thumb? I gotta rewind this. I'm gonna eat a carb before my workout and then a carb after my workout. Then I've been cutting out one carb throughout the day. So I'm probably gonna take out a carb. Enough with the word carb. Let's just call them calories. Let's, let's change the name. Why are we so hyper-focused on carbs? What about fats? What about proteins? I have my sourdough toast cooking in the oven. I don't think it's honestly that bad if you just have one and you're about to go work out, so you're gonna go burn it off anyways. She's having only one sourdough toast and she has to say, I don't think it's that bad because I'm going to work out. One? It would be like saying, I'm going to have one French toast for breakfast. It's not so bad because I'm going to go and work out right after. So it's okay to have one French toast. Guess what? You can have two French toast and not go work out. It's one. You didn't say 10. This wasn't one pizza. It's one piece of bread. Are you kidding me? I don't care if you're trying to lose weight. I don't care how big, tall, short, male, female you are. Every human being on this planet can handle one toast, even if they're not working out. Assuming you don't have some metabolic disorder where it's going to kill you, but everyone can handle about 100 calories from carbs. Unless you're on a keto diet, you probably shouldn't have any bread. But aside from that, I mean, come on. You can have one piece of toast, even if you're not going to work out. So I also am going to cook my bacon. This is just organic, uncured turkey bacon from Whole Foods. And look at how this woman looks while cooking her breakfast. No wonder she has 1.6 million followers. It's a 9.9 .9 Richter scale. You're thinking, I don't care what she eats. I want to watch her eat it. While my bacon is cooking, I'm going to put just a little bit of this vegan butter. And so clearly she's not vegan. She's having turkey bacon, but she's putting vegan butter on her bread. Don't know why. Don't know the benefit of this. I mean, I get it. If you're vegan, you don't want to consume animal products. Makes perfect sense to me. But she's having turkey bacon. So... I just don't get it. But hey, maybe she likes the taste of it, but there is no real reason to have vegan butter. My advice, don't have any of the butter. Maybe have another toast or two. Have some fruit, some yogurt. Add some more variety in that breakfast. You don't have to, of course. You don't have to do anything. I'm just saying, why not? And what I do notice is this is a more of a high calorie dense food item. It's great for bulking. It's great to keep your stomach flat because it's a very small amount of food. If you eat a lot of low calorie food items, it's going to make your stomach more full, which keeps you from being hungry, but you're going to be a little bit more bloated. So notice the title of the video is to have a flat stomach and round glutes. So perhaps that's why she's doing. She's about to go work out. She has a sports bra with the abs clearly visible and so perhaps she doesn't want to have a lot of food in her stomach because people will see the stomach, they'll see you bloated and say, oh, I think she's fat. So many people think this. They think that if you're bloated, it means you're fat. Half the time, if people were to see me in a picture with my shirt off, they say, oh, Coach Greg, you're not 9% body fat. Look at your belly. Yeah, I ate a salad. It's, it's full of food. It's not normal to walk around with a completely flat stomach shredded all the time. When I wake up in the morning, that's what I look like. But then I have three 24-ounce cups of coffee. 
And no, they're not all caffeinated, decaf and so on. I'm not crazy, but that's a lot of liquid. And I eat a lot of volume because I want to be full. So it does in fact make more sense to eat more high calorie dense foods with less fiber and more fat so that the food is smaller, takes up less space in the stomach and doesn't stretch out your skin as much. Problem is you're going to be hungry and how long can you sustain this if you're hungry? Your willpower will eventually run out, you'll binge and you regain all the weight and that is the worst thing you want to do. You want to avoid yo-yo dieting. I also want to mention, I am not a nutritionist, by the way. This is just what works for me. And so again, in case you didn't miss it, she's pointing out she's not a nutritionist. So again, she's saying, don't get nutritional advice from me. Just showing you what I'm eating. Don't watch this and copy me because I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I'm just doing this. So it's impossible to watch this video by me or anyone else and say, oh, you're doing this wrong because she's clearly stating, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just showing you what I do. So it's not fair if I were to say, oh, she shouldn't have said this and shouldn't have said that because she's clearly saying she doesn't know. So when I'm doing this video, I'm just saying what I think, but I'm not hating on her because that wouldn't be fair to her because she's clearly making it clear that she doesn't know what she's doing. But she does look freaking good doing it now, doesn't she? And this is what my avocado toast looks like. I feel like every time I do a review of a woman who looks amazing, they're having avocado on toast. I don't think there's any magical ingredients in avocados that makes it amazing. Yeah, it's got some healthy fats, but it's not as good as salmon. I would strongly suggest you replace this with salmon over avocado to get more omega-3 fatty acids, healthy fats. Not saying she should. If you don't like salmon, of course, it's boring. But if you're looking at this from a strictly nutritional point of view, this is not like amazing, magical foods that are going to make you have a flat stomach and round glutes. It's just food. All right, and this is what my beautiful meal looks like. Hey! The bacon. Maybe she watches Coach Greg. She had the freaking cookbook music in the background. You know the Coach Greg book. You know the Coach Greg music. You know the Coach Greg music. The cookbook to buy my freaking cookbook, low calorie delicious meals, which she doesn't eat because she might be a little bloated eating those meals, but she'd be full. Okay, I also have this big giant jug of water. I like how she calls a two cup glass of water, a giant jug of water. Those of you who are bodybuilders out there, raise your hand. Yeah, there's a few of you. You know a giant jug of water is a four liter jug of water. It's the four liter jug with the handle, the plastic jug. How many of you walk around with one of those all day? You carry it with you to the gym? Not as common nowadays, but definitely was common back in the day. Four liter giant jug of water. This is two cup glass of water. I drink three times more than this of coffee every morning. And yeah, you should drink a lot of water. It's obviously healthy for you. So it's good that she's drinking water every morning. And this is my energy drink. I just really drink, grab any protein drink that I like. This one's Stardust, it's pretty good. She says it's an energy drink and calls it a protein drink. Energy isn't equal to protein. A lot of people think protein is energy. Protein is used to build muscle. So what's in there that makes it an energy drink? It's called caffeine. The same thing like when I drink my cup of coffee. So my first cup of coffee, which is half decaf, half coffee, I drink that 24 ounce glass. That's my first drink. The next two are decaf. So it's very similar to what she's doing. She's drinking 200 milligrams of caffeine, gonna wake her up, give her more energy, probably help her to keep full, gonna give her energy to train at the gym, and then she's drinking another two cups of water. So that is a lot of liquid, similar to what I'm doing. But it's not a protein drink. For it to be a protein drink, it has to have protein. This only has 10 calories, which is essentially negligible calories, very low, don't need to worry about it. But it's not a protein drink because there's no protein in it. So a reminder, she already said she's not a nutritionist and you can clearly see why she called an energy drink a protein drink. Just want to point that out because a lot of people watch her videos and they won't know this. They won't know the difference. So I'm just correcting this information because you need the correct information to make smart and educated decisions in your own eating. Does anyone else see that little like happy dance when they see food? Like I just get... <laughs> I start wiggling. <laughs> and absolutely the happy dance. Allie does it all the time. So I can totally relate to see her doing the happy dance. Except Allie does it when it's with pizza and garlic fingers. Not often with the avocado toast. I wish, but it's usually with pizza. Pickle pizza. My abs 
were seriously so sore and it's really hard for me to get my abs to be sore. If you want perfect abs, just do this. So if you want perfect abs, she wants you to copy her abs routine of which she has a difficult time getting them sore and they were sore. So she's suggesting that that's a good workout. I disagree. You shouldn't be training your abs to the point of soreness. To me, if you do, you're training them too hard. Okay, You're going to have to back off a little bit. And frankly, training your abs till they get sore is not the way to get a flat stomach. To get a flat stomach, you need to be in a calorie deficit, which will allow you to lose fat. If your percentage of body fat gets low enough, that is how you will see abs. It's not from doing sit-ups and building up your abs. It's from getting leaner so you can see through the skin enough to see the outline of the abs. So although she has great abs, flat stomach, to me it's likely more due to genetics and a low body fat percentage more so than how she's training her abs. They have been coming in so much more lately. And I really think it's because I've been doing more cardio and more ab exercises. And she's saying her abs are coming in more lately and it's due to her doing more cardio and abs. And I would have ended the sentence at cardio. Cardio and abs. No, just doing the cardio which burns calories, which puts you into a deficit. That is what's allowing you to see your abs. Doing the extra sit-ups and when they're sore, not really doing that much. You might think it is. You might think it's because of the sit-ups that you're getting the abs, but really it's because your body fat percentage is lower than last time. And so she's going to have a protein smoothie meal or basically a protein shake and she puts in some ice and some frozen spinach and she puts, guess what? A whole entire banana. Wow, mind-blowing, probably 120 calories because she worked out so she can handle the carbs. There's about 60 calories in a half a banana versus 120. This is a meal. You really think you can't have a whole banana? You ate a small breakfast and worked out and did cardio, and you think that a whole banana versus a half is enough. Literally, that's only a difference of 60 calories. And people think they're going to the gym and burn off five, six, seven hundred calories. She's adding 60 extra calories of what she'd have if she didn't work out. 60. Even I believe she burned off more than 60 calories during this workout. She could probably even eat another sourdough slice of bread if she wanted. She could add more calories. It's not that big a deal. This is a woman who's exercising, doing a lot of cardio, lifting weights, who looks amazing, but she's essentially starving herself here. And I know everyone's metabolisms are different, but I do believe that this is a calorie deficit for her. She did say at the start of the video she's trying to lose weight. So what I do think is this is a diet. She's trying to lose weight. And it says, what I eat in a day for a flat tummy and big booty. This will not give you a big booty. It can get you a flat stomach because it's going to lower your body fat levels. But what it in fact will do is get you a smaller booty. Because when you drop body fat, it goes from everywhere. Some of it is going to come from your stomach. Some of it is going to come from your glutes. So if you go on a diet and lose weight, expect to drop inches from your stomach. But the same thing is going to occur from your hips and glutes. Your stomach gets smaller and at the same time, your hips and ass, it gets smaller as well. You can't just grow your glutes and shrink your waist at the same time. So unless you're getting surgery, don't think you can go on some kind of a diet where you're in a large calorie deficit, starving yourself, and get a smaller stomach and bigger glutes at the same time. It is not going to happen. So if you're hiring someone or paying for a training program saying, I want to really shrink my waist and make myself have huge glutes at the same time, make me that plan for three months, you better be getting a discount code from their surgeon. Usually I do half if I didn't just work out, but since I did, I'm going to do whole. I'm going to do some almond butter. And she's adding some tablespoons of almond butter and says it tastes good. Of course it does. It's, it's almond butter. We get it. But the only difference between not working out and working out, it's not the almond butter. It's the half of a banana. Why don't you just add more peanut butter? Add more something else and have more calories. But I get it. You're on a diet. You're trying to lose weight. But don't be scared of the carbs in the banana. It's just a banana. And she's adding in the protein powder and glutamine for recovery. Great. 
It sounds like she's making an anabolic protein shake, protein ice cream, where he can dump it over the head. We'll soon find out if it's thick enough to pass the ice cream test. And it's definitely not protein ice cream. It's a smoothie. But listen, if she wanted to make it into protein ice cream, she could add a bit of guar gum, less almond milk, less liquid. That would make it thicker. Or add some guar gum or xanthan gum, which would help pass the over-the-head ice cream challenge. And it's now meal three, the third and final meal of the day. Chicken and not broccoli, green beans and rice and a nutty glaze. That is three meals in total for the entire day. This is for someone who's working out and doing cardio. It's not a lot of food. And if she wanted to maximize glute gains, she's only eating three meals a day. But studies have shown that you have up to five opportunities for muscle protein synthesis to occur. So she should in fact be eating more meals with protein. I would suggest to add one or two more meals or snacks with protein to help maximize the growth of her glutes. But listen, it's working for her. She says she's not a nutritionist. This is just what she does. She's showing you what she does. So what does she do? She eats hardly any calories, three meals a day, and looks like a 9.9 .9 Richter scale. Great genetics. The rest of us probably would need better genetics and surgery to get these results. And even if we did get them, probably be starving the whole time. That is just what I eat in a day. It doesn't mean that's what you should eat in a day. It's just what I found works for me and my body. And she ends it by saying, that's what I eat in a day. It's not what you should eat in a day. So basically, don't freaking judge me. Make videos about me because I'm telling you straight up, don't listen to me. It's just what I do. Ending it here. GregDuset.com for coaching. Greg Duset IP Pro. The usual bloops are over there. Don't forget to buy the freaking cookbook. If you want to actually eat and be full, not starve yourself on three meals a day like this. But if you can, great for you. And until next time, I am out.